My name is Nitika Chopra, and I'm a talk show host, a self-love expert, and I'm also a chronic illness advocate. I was diagnosed with psoriasis at the age of 10, so it's been 27 years now, and I have been dealing with my health through that condition and also psoriatic arthritis for a very long time. It's been a huge part of my journey and my story and why I do everything that I do. I was in the middle of Ohio, and I went into the bathroom, and I saw that I had this like tiny, dry patch on my left arm and I called my mom into the bathroom and I asked her you know what is that like that doesn't make any sense it's so weird I've never seen that before and she kind of thought that it was eczema which is something that my parents have both had before and it was pretty controllable like their version of it they would put a little cream on it and it would go away and it was never a big deal for them so they kind of didn't think it was going to be a big deal for me either and then I ended up being sent to the dermatologist for the first time and they did a biopsy on me and they were like, okay, we need to see if this is psoriasis or it's eczema. And one of the greatest memories or the, the strongest memories from that time is my uncle who is a doctor was talking to my parents and he said to them, I really hope it's not psoriasis because if it is, her life is gonna be greatly affected by it. And I'll just never forget that because there was such a heaviness to it before I even knew what was going on with my body. And of course it ended up being psoriasis. And I then went on a journey of having psoriasis from basically the tip of my foot to the tip of my head. It was covering my body except for like my face didn't really have it that much and my hands and my feet didn't really have it that much. So I used to always say, that like the universe was protecting me so I could wear like long sleeves and pants if I really needed to and no one would really have to know. I had severe plaque psoriasis. So what plaque psoriasis shows up as is like these thick scaly patches of skin where you know wearing the fact that I'm wearing black right now like it's it's not lost on me that there were decades of my life where wearing a dark color anything was so challenging and pretty much impossible because I looked like I was flaking all the time on such a severe level. When I was 18, 19, my psoriasis got so bad that you know like when your lips chap and bleed in the winter and they are just so painful to even move. My whole body became like that just from my skin. And so I ended up being sent to like a specialist at some big fancy hospital and, and we had been through so many treatments and things. I had tried everything from Chinese herbs to Reiki to homeopathy to Ayurveda to everything. And but so when I was 19, I got on a medication that actually it helped for the first like six months. It didn't completely take it away, but I remember I had more patches of skin, like my thighs were clear, parts of my arms were clear, parts of my stomach, but I wasn't completely clear and I was waiting, you know, for that to happen. And then about six months in, it started to reverse and it stopped working. And then I ended up getting psoriatic arthritis. And I remember I was in my dorm in school, sitting there trying to open the, the bag inside the cereal box. And I remember like my, my hands weren't working and I was just like, why? This is weird, like why is this not working? I had already experienced so much pain and suffering with my skin and to add something on top of it was really just devastating. Um, and then I ended up uh, going to India and my parents had moved to India and I was living in the States and so I just went for a few weeks and I ended up staying for six months because I found an acupuncturist who said that he could heal me. And I've been I've been told this many 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 times before, but you know I had a connection with this man. He was like an older you know uncle kind of a figure in my life, and he was very sweet. And he had helped a lot of people heal. And I was in college, and so my parents were like, "Take the semester off, come stay. Like, let's try to heal you." That was a really pivotal moment in my life because um, I refer to it now as like a moment where I really tried to force my healing and it was really honestly one of the more cruel things I have done to myself. I, I went to India and I was doing acupuncture six days a week, twice a day for six months straight. And I had psoriasis all over my body. So if you imagine just a scar, a wound of any kind on your body that's scabbed over and sticking a needle in that 38 times. I did that to myself. I allowed people to do that to me for six months straight. 
and I was better at the end of it. I was, I was getting married to, at the time, the love of my life, and we decided to get married in India. And my whole thing was I wanted to be a healthy bride. I needed to be healthy on my wedding day. I did not want this man to marry me as a sick person. And so I forced the crap out of my healing. And I stopped eating certain foods. That was also the first time a doctor had ever told me that my diet actually made a difference to what my health was doing. In America, no one ever talked about it. They would always say, no, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Still to this day, my dermatologists and my rheumatologists say that. But this Ayurvedic acupuncturist was like, no, you have to cut out nightshades. I didn't know what nightshades were, anti-inflammatory diet, all of that. And I did it. And I lost 23 pounds in two months just from the eating differently. And I, um, and I was healed by the end of it. And I was healthy on my wedding day. And then the day after my wedding, I decided to eat Pizza Hut pizza because I had not eaten anything like that in six months. And I was like, well, I'm healed now, you know? So I wasn't gonna indulge and go crazy, but I was like, it'll be fine. Like, you'll be, you'll be fine. You'll have it once, you go back to your diet. Like, it's not a big deal, you're healed. And immediately within 24 hours of having that pizza, my psoriasis started to break through my skin again. And I started a six year journey of being the sickest I've ever been. And because I couldn't stay in India, I had to move back to New York and start my life with my husband. And, and um, I ended up being so physically debilitated, I couldn't move without severe pain. I couldn't take the stairs. I couldn't get myself dressed properly. I couldn't chop vegetables. I, I was, you know, weeping in pain on a daily basis. Um, and I also simultaneously had started this introspective part of my life that was very different from the first decade of me being sick. So the first decade was with my family. No one's really that introspective. No one really talks about God that much or, you know, spirituality or positive thinking. It's really like immigrant stress, fear, <laughs> like it's very different. So I started to really, you know, go into the depths of this introspection and learning about like, how do you change your identity? How do you think positively? How do you, you know, manifest the life of your dreams and all of this stuff? And while I was really sick, I was not taking any medication. I wasn't sure what to eat because I felt like I had done this really strict thing and it worked, but then it totally backfired. I was honestly really lost, but the only thing that felt real was this positive thinking. So it's pretty much all I did for six years. And I was the sickest that I have ever been. And I was in bed a lot and I was in severe pain and after about five years of that, five or six years of that, I remember calling my parents who had then moved to Hong Kong and I was telling my mom, you know, I keep talking about God and spirituality and the power of the universe. And I think God might have made medicine for a reason. And I think I need to, to see if there's something there. I can't live in fear. So I ended up going to a rheumatologist for the first time, which is just someone who helps you with your bones specifically. And I was 25 at the time and my doctor looked at me and he just said, you know, your bones are starting to physically deform. And I mean, my fingers are deformed. I can't bend this wrist. My toes are deformed. And he looked at me and he just was like, if you don't stop it now, you will be crippled by the time you're 30. And that was in five years. And that was really, that was real. So I tried a medication and I was terrified. I was so terrified. I believe in the power of our bodies to heal ourselves. I really deeply actually believe that. So it felt like I was going against everything that I've believed in so deeply. And it was really hard for me. And even as someone in the wellness industry and in the self-help space, sometimes it's something I still have to work through shame around and know that like my body needed medication at the time. And I went from not walking and being so debilitated to literally skipping down the street within two weeks of my first dose of my medication. And I remember calling my mom who had gone back to Hong Kong and hysterically crying to her on the phone because I was wearing a dress for the first time in forever. And it changed my life. Since then, I'm still on medication, but it's been a huge, that's been a whole other journey, you know? So that was like 12 years ago. I'm 
that journey was about figuring out like how do I honor that my body needs this, this drug, it needs medication right now and, and it might need it forever, it might need it for the next 10 years, it might need it for the next three, I don't know, but it needs it right now. And how do I also fully show up for it at the same time? When I first started my medication, I was like, I can eat all the things now. I like, there are no symptoms. You know, it's gonna be great. Like I can just go and just lean on the medication totally. And that to me is not the point. And it wasn't until a couple of years ago, I was taking medication still, and I found that I had a lot of symptoms still like seeping through. My, I still had psoriasis on my legs. I, my bones would still hurt often. And actually it's so funny because all of that was happening but there was like a normalcy to that for me almost because I had been used to it for so long. I, I got this candida rash on my back. It's just like these little white dots on my skin and it was really itchy. I don't know why, it just totally triggered me to start asking questions. I just stopped asking after a while. You know, I became, I think I just got so tired of trying to heal myself so much that like I needed a bit of a break. And a couple of years ago when I got this candida rash, I had this experience where I went to my dermatologist and I had gotten really comfortable asking my dermatologist to give me things. And he gave me a ointment for my candida. And the next day it was twice as bad. And I called a friend of mine who's a health coach and I was like, so I have this thing, like I feel like there's gotta be a natural remedy for this, but I don't really know what it is. And she said like obviously diet is like the biggest thing, but in the meantime you can put coconut oil on it. And like that's actually a natural antifungal, like you can use that, it really helps. So I stopped using the ointment and I put coconut oil on it and the next day it was almost completely gone. And I just had this like deep message. If you don't go back to what you know is true about how powerful your body is, you're not going to be a around much longer. And I know that sounds like really dramatic, but the medication that I'm on is really intense. And it just became really clear to me that like I was leaning on it too much. I, I was so ready to like take ownership in a way that I had never really had the energy, honestly, to take ownership of my health. And I ended up realizing I needed to find a doctor who was willing to get messy with me and who was willing to do the work. Because I have met a lot of doctors who I'm sure are wonderful people, but they're just, they're not signing up for the messy, hard work that most chronic illnesses really demand. I went to the Bloom Center, um, which is in Rye, New York, and they have all different specialists there that you can see, which is great. And um, I saw Elizabeth Gregg over there, and she's been amazing. They did the gut test, they did hormone tests, they did blood tests, they did all these different things. And I found out some insane stuff about my gut out of one to 100%, let's say, of like 100% is a totally healthy gut. I was at like a three. And you know, you're know you apparently supposed to have like 30 different bacteria and small amounts of each bacteria in your gut. And your immune system is, you know, 90% of it is in your gut. So it's all connected. And, and I knew these things and I would tell people this stuff all the time, but I didn't, I wasn't actually doing it for myself. And I had five different bacteria and large amounts of each. So I was just totally out of whack. And I started to really just attack this with food. I do believe that everybody should get tested and figure out what their body needs. But just for some basic things, um, psoriasis and a lot of chronic illnesses are like hot, they're, they're based on inflammation. There's a lot of inflammation in the body. And so if you just think about that, I think of like inflammation as heat. In the incident of you know having a pizza or something, it's like the tomatoes are highly acidic, they're a nightshade, it causes a lot of heat in your body. The cheese is the dairy, I mean that just skyrockets inflammation for everybody, but especially if you have psoriasis. And gluten, for me my body doesn't process it, I don't have celiac, but it doesn't process it well at all. So. There's just a trifecta that is very unfortunate. Um, and then also sugar. And I find actually that's probably the thing I'm most grateful for that I don't crave the way that I used to. I really try to watch my sugar intake. Um, and I really try to, I don't really have dairy. Sometimes I'll have like a little bit of feta cheese in a salad or something. Cause I, I want to be able to have some and not feel 
like I'm depriving myself, but during the first year, um, it's been two years now, but during the first year of me doing the healthy food regimen, I didn't have any dairy. I didn't have any sugar. The only sugar I had was berries, um, and that only like blueberries, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, because I can't eat strawberries. I couldn't eat most fruit. It would just cause reactions, um, and so and I didn't miss it. And then I started to do this thing where I would get like really dark, dark chocolate that had like basically no sugar in it and um, combine it with a little bit of cashew butter. Um, so it's finding hacks like that where, you know, I've been a junk food person since I was a kid. I'm not the person who's like, I can't wait to have my green juice in the morning. But I have found ways to like just make it real and make it like, you know, sustainable and make it satisfying and, you have to work at that. And now, although I still have to take medication, I can't, I can't walk without it, I am so much healthier than I have ever been. I have no symptoms on the medication, which has never happened to me before. And I'm on a path to seeing how can I reduce my medication and hopefully one day get off of it. I think it's possible. I just haven't figured out like what is the exact key that's gonna unlock all of that yet, but I'm, I'm like grateful and proud to be on the journey of that and I feel like I'm strong enough to ask the questions and meet the people and take the tests and even now, you know, as I'm doing much better and I'm in remission with everything, I made a commitment to myself to get retested for everything once a year on my birthday and I'm just like, even if everything seems fine, it's like that's how I end up you know, all of a sudden there's like 20 different symptoms and I'm really not doing well and I have to start over and it's like not okay. Um, versus just being on top of it and managing it myself and also being on top of my diet and cooking and being consistent with all of that.